fish sketch. Again, my name is Alex, and Haley is here as well. So we are going to be doing uh, more fish sketching. Uh, now, if you haven't been following along with fish sketch, what, what, is, what is Sunday fish sketch? Yeah, so basically Sunday fish sketch was a hashtag started on Twitter by Renee Martin, and it's really cool. Every Friday, they release a new theme for then a Sunday challenge where you draw some sort of fish according to that theme. So things we've done in the past, we had to draw a fish without a reference. Uh, we had to draw some juvenile fish, so some little tiny fish. Um, and this week, we actually have to do a kind of a what quarantine fish are you? So it's supposed <laughs> yeah. to be how different fish kind of behave in self-isolation. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we, of course, have ourselves uh, uh, spread out here, the, the recommended oh, yeah. social, uh, social distancing. Uh, these are actually meter sticks, not yard sticks. So we, we get that extra like 8% or 9% or whatever it is. Um, but uh, we are going to have references today, but we've picked four fish that kind of self-isolate to a yeah, degree, to or degree. that we can associate with in our own self-isolation. Yeah, um, or they have like territorial behaviors maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like why are they alone, that sort of thing. So we're gonna be working our way through these. What's our first fish? Um, I think we're doing a wolf eel. Yeah, we're gonna do the wolf eel. Yeah. So we will start on our uh, sketch in here. Hopefully we can toss up a picture of a wolf eel for you at some point. Um, but then you'll be able to watch us and all that. And we certainly hope that you uh, are sketching along. You don't have to sketch the ones we're sketching if you have some other quarantine fish, self-isolation fish, social distance fish that you want to do. Feel free to do that. If you do draw something, though, we would love to see it. So please go ahead, toss it up on Twitter with the hashtag SundayFishSketch for the whole group, uh, but also hashtag at Teleaquarium so that we know it was someone that followed along with us here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. So let's get started. A wolf eel. Yeah. Uh, if you've been watching some of our earlier uh, Telequarium programs. We are doing these twice a day at 12 and 2. Um, Darren actually has done a lot of stuff with wolf eels. We did a wolf yeah. eel feed where the divers were feeding the wolf eels. Um, and we also did a uh, clay wolf eel activity that you should go check that out. That one's really cool. If you've just got some clay laying around, he does a really good job with a clay wolf eel. Yeah, I thought that program was really neat. Yeah. Lots but of cool facts. Something Darren Wolfness. said, though, is that a wolf eel not a true eel. No, it's not. So what makes the difference? What, what, what is it? Do you, yeah, do you remember what Darren said? I kind of do, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Darren. Um, it is a fish. One of the things is that they actually have an operculum, which is basically they have a gill slit located kind of on the side of their neck, essentially. And it's like a hard, bony gill covering, whereas typical like real eels don't really have that. They still have gills, but that gill opening looks a little bit different in a actual eel versus wolf eels, which are actually just another type of fish. Yeah. That's not to say eels aren't fish, but like you were saying that the perculum or the operculum makes the difference there. Right, yeah. Um, and so if you think about like moray eels, uh, they look kind of scary, right? Eels, a lot of times people think they kind of look scary. Um, and that is... Uh, in part because they can't force water past their gills without really like gulping water. They always have their mouth open, they've maybe got some, some teeth in there, and that makes them look a little scarier. So uh, with these wolf eels, they can actually pump water without looking so scary. But they are still kind of, I don't know, not scary looking fish, strange looking fish. They are kind of strange I've heard them fish. referred to uh, old men before, they've kind of got like a wrinkled face. I think they kind of have like an underbite. <laughs> they have a little underbite. Yeah. Another thing with wolf eels is they actually have fins. So they do have a, um, a little side fin going on there, which normal eels really wouldn't have. Um, yeah. Oh, so really good point. Our yardsticks together are actually about as long as a wolf eel, right? Oh, yeah. They can get really long. Um, that's yeah. kind of the eely part of their name there. So Yeah. yeah. So they can be like six feet long. So you should be like, a wolf eel's distance apart from people. I, my wolf eel is not coming along here. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> we have this reference, and I'm just trying to not just draw the reference. Plus, our reference, uh, it's actually from uh, Joel Satori. You know, if, if we pop that uh, image up there for you and you saw it, really great photographs. Joel Satori uh, has come to the Sea Life Center and done a couple, couple sessions with some of our animals, uh, and he actually does photo art with National Geographic. Uh, and that's a project where he's documenting all the animals that are under human care in facilities like zoos, aquariums, um, just sometimes like people's private uh, animals, actually. Like, uh, there, I think there was someone who had like some really crazy um, types of maybe pheasants, I want to say it was. So 
Um, check out Photo Arc uh, if you like those photos. They are just gorgeous photos. Yeah. My wolf feel is looking a little, little not great, but <laughs> we're gonna get it done. And again, you don't have to be able to draw well. No, definitely not. To do this. Um, now, the reason we said a wolf eel is a self-isolation fish. Why, why would we pick this for a self-isolation fish? Well, typically wolf eels like to pick like one area to kind of have a den, and they usually are pretty solitary, so they kind of just like to hang out by themselves. Um, our wolf eel here has a little like, nice rock stack that she hangs out in pretty much all the time. Sometimes she'll poke her little head out of there, say hello, but most of the time she just kind of curls herself up in there. It always amazes me how small they can get. Yeah, they really <laughs> pack themselves in there. Yeah. Um, however, the, the sad time of the year for our, our wolf eel in the uh, bird habitat is when she's gravid, which means she's filled with eggs. She's like fish pregnant, if you want to think of it that way. <laughs> um, now, we don't have a male, so those eggs are never fertilized, but she still develops them and, and eventually lays them. But she actually becomes so swollen with those eggs that she can't, she can't tuck nicely in her den sometimes. Oh. Uh, and she just sits outside of her den and pouts because she just wants to be in that den. Um, she's a really sweet, uh, sweet fish. That's actually one of the reasons we hand feed her. Uh, she's just super sweet, but she's kind of shy. And so we always want to make sure she's getting food. And when divers go in, we'll, we'll take over some food, see if she's hungry. Yeah, if you haven't seen that video of our divers feeding the wolf eel, you should definitely check it out. It's super cool. Um, not something you see every day, for sure. No. All right, I think I'm probably about as good as I'm going to get on okay. my wolf eel. How are, how are you feeling over there? I'm you, feeling pretty good, You yeah. want me to show first here? Sure, yeah. I have like a weird broken tip on my pencil. Well, you got two more pencils there. It, it's all right. <laughs> it's actually, I'm putting uh, spots on there because they kind of have these spots. Oh, nice. And it's doing like weird double spots, so. Well, that could work. Yeah. All right. Next one. Let me let me let me put wolf eel on here, in case <laughs> no one can it. recognize this. <laughs> wolf eel, uh, which is different from a wolf fish. That's actually another type of fish. Oh yeah. Um, so tell aquarium. Going to hashtag these, and we will share these. Actually, we've been uh, sharing the past couple weeks now uh, on Sunday fish sketch. Yeah, it's been fun to see if anybody else is drawing along with us. All right, so here is my wolf eel. Let's see how this goes. Compared to the reference, uh, perhaps not the best. So you see I got some of those spots in there, but again, the reference that we have is this gorgeous photo from Joel Satori, um, which is just great. That's a fantastic photo. If, if you uh, actually uh, look him up, if you look up Joel Satori, um, you can kind of see how he does those shots. Um, and so for, for some creatures like fish, it's easy because they're, they're in a little, little tank and he mm -hmm. kind of puts a backdrop on there. And uh, he's done shots that with like tigers and uh, apes and stuff. And yeah. they're a little less ruly about it. So, That's all like, right, well, let's see what really yours is. Really impressive. Um, this is mine. <laughs> oh, excellent. Okay, I hey, like it. Yeah, uh, she's little. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Got some going on. All right. All right. So that's great. our first one. What's our next one? Uh, our next one, we're going to do rockfish, actually. Awesome. Sounds um, good. And rockfish, if you've been watching our all day tank stream, we've actually just been streaming all day now, um, uh, also from our YouTube channel. You can go ahead and find that on, on our YouTube channel under live. Uh, we've actually been streaming our bird tank, which we're upstairs right now, but downstairs you can see the fish that live in that uh, enclosure as well. Um, and there's a lot of rockfish in there, and you might think they don't look particularly antisocial. You know, they're not self-isolating, they're not socially distancing, they're just kind of drifting around. Uh, so why, why do we pick a rockfish? Well, for rockfish, specifically, we're kind of looking at this one rockfish called a quillback rockfish, and they have really sharp dorsal spines. So their dorsal fin is the one that's on their back. So located dorsally versus ventrally, which would be like your stomach side. Um, and they have these spines that are actually pretty pokey. So they can kind of use those to look really big and scary, maybe ward off different predators from their territory or potentially even other rockfish. So, just, they don't really like hanging out with others. Yeah, so. and some of those spines can actually be like venomous. You know? Right, yeah. They can have a venom. 
Um, now, people like to eat rockfish. Yeah. Uh, if you ever do visit Seward, Alaska, where we are here at the Sea Life Center, um, you can frequently get like fried rockfish. Yep. Um, and when you catch them, you kind of got to be careful a little bit of the spines. And rockfish are also a, a species that, um, in some ways, we need to be concerned about. You know, we can fish them sustainably, um, but they can live a very long time. Right. Uh, and the, the problem is, is if you're catching them too young, mm -hmm. then you're kind of depriving us of um, them laying their eggs, right? Like, not just us, but the whole ocean ecosystem, because they can lay millions. Uh, well, it's not even laying the eggs. They actually give birth to the live young. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, millions at once. Uh, many of them don't survive, but when you have these long-lived animals, catching them a little too young is, is kind of concerning. Yeah. And we have a, a picture we can put up uh, of a yellow eye rockfish in that bird habitat. And it's actually got uh, some of those spikes up on its back. Uh, it's dorsal fin there. It's got those little spikes up. Decided I'm drawing my fish very small today. Oh, I feel like mine are kind of getting... I feel like another fun thing with rockfish is that there's a bunch of different species of rockfish. Yeah. And they can be in a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different patterns. Uh, we have canary rockfish here, which are like bright orange. Um, then we also have black rockfish. So really, if you wanted to draw a rockfish, you could kind of color it whatever color you want. And one of our rockfish that we have here is the quill back, which is specifically named because of those, uh, those quills. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not sure about my, my fish here either, but we're going we're gonna to figure it out. It's looking kind of like a strange salmon right now. Yeah, mine, all my fish kind of look the same if they're like <laughs> normal fish shaped, and then I just do the fins differently, but eh, it works out. They also have these really nice pectoral fins, but a lot of times they kind of have them laid against their side uh, yeah. or out from their side, um, like big old wings. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of them do get counter shading, which we spoke about last week, yeah. where they're a little lighter on their underside um, than their top. And a lot of them have a very obvious lateral line, which is a line of uh, actually sensory organs down the side of their body uh, that can feel... Uh, movement in the water, vibrations in the water. And they use that uh, to, sort of to know, you know, is something cruising around near me in the water? So that counter shading is light on the bottom, darker on the top, uh, and that's sort of a way for them to camouflage themselves, because if you're looking from below, the fish should be silhouetted against uh, a light top, and if you're looking from uh, above, uh, it's against a dark bottom or a dark, deeper water. So, right. Good way to camouflage. All right, I'm going to show my fish. Not, yeah. uh, not feeling ready. this one, but rockfish. Let's see it right on down there. So you see, I got a little counter shading on there, and it's cut by a very nice, stark lateral line. If anyone's got any questions about any of these fish, you can go ahead and toss those in the chat, and uh, our, our, our camera folks will try to get that to us. Oh, you did like a hole on a separate sheet. I'm just slapping them all on one. Oh, there. that's fine. Yeah, no, I just used the back of the sheet I was working on earlier. I'm like, you're, yours is over. looking pretty good. Yeah, wait, I want to see yours. <laughs> He's got like a weird like Frankenstein salmon head on him. All right. I mean, that's what the mouth is like on this one. I guess. We'll see. All right. Okay. Next fish. What do we got? I think we're doing a flatfish. Flatfish. Yep. Yep. These guys are a little funky. Now, you, uh, you had, had a reason why we selected the flatfish as uh, our social distance yes. fish. Why, why are we picking a flatfish? So, to me, flatfish are kind of awkward. They're like kind of smush flat, they kind of lie on their side horizontally. So I was thinking that if you're social distancing right now, maybe you're in isolation, maybe you're using that time to catch up on a lot of TV or a lot of Netflix. So the flatfish is with you on that. Maybe you're just kind of being horizontal and getting some good TV watching in. So maybe the flatfish is doing <laughs> that. The flat fish. So of course, just like rockfish, uh, flatfish is like a variety of fish. We're not just talking about any one type, but it includes you know, halibut, 
uh, flounders, soles, and all those can be found here in Alaska. We have different varieties. Um, and it's another fish that people like to eat. Yeah, uh, kind of like that rockfish again. Important species, for sure. But I think famous, the, the flatfish in general, just famous for starting, starting life looking like a normal fish, um, and then its eyes shift. Yeah. So like one eye actually kind of shifts over onto uh, the other side of its body so that it has both eyes on one side and its mouth is kind of sideways. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know more about them, Haley actually did a, a fun little video for Teleaquarium a while back uh, all about flatfish. All about flatfish. I think it was on a Friday. It was Friday flatfish, right? Yeah, it was. Played a fun game with how they camouflage as well. So maybe they're, they're also trying to blend in so they can't be seen by anybody. Also kind of what you were saying, Alex, about the rockfish, I feel like could apply to the flatfish for if they're fish but when they're too big. Yes. Um, that can also affect their population sizes as well. If, you, if, you're, if you're catching them when they're, when they're too young or, or right, whatnot. Right, exactly, because yeah. they mature um, later in life as well. Yeah. Yep, uh, that's another one you can get a lot of fried halibut. I think I'm gonna kinda, I don't know, I'm gonna differentiate this one from any other flatfish, I guess. I'm going to do a starry flounder. Ooh, what would make it a starry flounder? So starry flounders, the way I recognize them, I, um, there's actually something we'll be talking about uh, probably in a future teleaquarium is uh, I, I frequently put a camera down underwater and just leave it there and see what shows up. And that's a method used by uh, many scientists around the world, whether you're in water or not, right? It's kinda like a trail cam. Um, but in the case of starry flounder, I see them down by the camera a lot, and I can always tell it's them because they've got these nice, like, black bands on, um, I guess it would be their dorsal and uh, ventral fins because mm -hmm. they're on their side. Right, but yeah, yeah. you kind of get these weird black bands around the side. Oh, interesting. So I'm just going to kind of color those in a little darker, I guess. Yeah, go for it. They just cruise around like little UFOs sometimes. They'll just, you see them scoot past in the background of the camera and you're like, what is that? Ah, it's a starry flounder. Yeah, they have a really funny swimming pattern. They kind of, they just kind of undulate. They're like little worms. Yeah. Flatfish is looking I feel like they have a decent amount of scales on them. Like some of these fish are kind of smooth. The, the wolf eel is kind of smooth. She's not particularly scaly, scaly. Yeah. But uh, really. the flatfish definitely have scales. And some of them can even change the color of their skin a little bit, mm -hmm. um, sort of by uh, modulating those uh, scales and, and some of their um, pigment. They can, they can blend in a little better with the substrate that they're on, if it's like gravel or mud or whatever. All right, I'm gonna show mine. All right, yeah, show them. Pretty ready for this one, for better or worse. Yeah, <laughs> no. This, this is probably my, my worst so far. We're gonna see how I do on the last one here, I think. We got our, our little starry flounder bands, the, the black and white striping there on oh, those yeah. things. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got a little there. Cool. cool. Let's see what you got. All right, I got this guy. Nice. That's a good one. I didn't even slap gills on my guy, so yeah, no, that's really good. I find that I always forget to put that on. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna add even my though it's like gills right now. Super necessary. Yeah, I totally forgot. I'm just gonna add them. We're not on a time, time crunch this time. No, not this time. If you want to see us panic about drawing fish, you can go back to our first Sunday yes. fish sketch because not only were we not allowed to use references. We made an extra challenge and only gave ourselves a minute and like 30 seconds. It was like a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. so that was, that was definitely an added challenge. <laughs> All right, our last photo. If you came to this stream um, early, if you were waiting for us, or if you just came to it from your subscriptions or you just popped up in your recommendeds on YouTube, uh, first of all, if you're not subscribed to us, think about clicking that little subscribe button, hit the bell, and that way you'll know when we go live. Uh, and you can catch these when they're live. You can ask us questions. Uh, but if you saw the thumbnail for this video, you saw our last fish here, oh, yeah. and that is a decorated war bonnet. Uh, and I think the thumbnail makes it obvious why we selected that as the social distance fish, because it's like living in a buoy. Yeah, 
that? Um, we actually have a harbor bottom uh, habitat here at the Sea Life Center. It kind of simulates what it would be like under docks uh, down at a, a small boat harbor. Um, so there's like encrusted pilings that are covered in, in mussels and barnacles, that sort of thing. Um, but we have a couple of decorated war bonnets in there, which are just another uh, gorgeous fish. Uh, and we have another great photo from Joel Satori to show you. Um, but one of our decorated war bonnets in the harbor bottom loves to live in, uh, there's like a buoy with a hole punched in it. Yep. And it just sits in there. It's got his face sticking out of the buoy. That's a cool, cool place to always hang out. I think I'm going to, I already drew a long fish in the form of the wolf eel. Mm -hmm. This is another long fish, but I think I'm going to try to draw a buoy fish. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good idea. I mean, you won't be able to tell. <laughs> Like, when I show this online, it's just gonna be like, what is that? It's just poking out from somewhere. Yeah, this is the one I probably feel the least confident about. The buoy fish? Yep. Or the, excuse me, the that just the decorated war bonnet? <laughs> buoy fish. There's like a great little hole yeah. in the buoy. Do you know, is there any reason why they have kind of that interesting, like, tuft on their head? I'm not actually certain. Now, some yeah. fish have tufts like that for, um, you know, like a, uh, like a lure. Mm -hmm. um, and these fish, actually, they do kind of pair up really nicely. Um, so I think, uh, like, the combination of that and the coloring could play a role in the, the breeding as well. But that's actually one I'm uncertain of. Yeah. Um, I don't know that they're using it like a lure, like a, like a frogfish would, or right. um, you know, like a, an angler fish or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get deep sea fish for a Ooh. Sunday uh, fish sketch. And that I can, would be really fun if we could twist one of these to be about deep sea fish, because we got we got some interesting specimens going on there. I'm spending more time on the buoy than the fish, I think. Here. <laughs> That's okay. This one's looking interesting. Yeah, this one's weird because he's got, um, he's kind of got like a standard fish head. Honestly, it's not that weird. Right. And then, the then there's all the like decoration, so AKA weird. decorated war bonnet. Makes sense. Oh gosh, it's just, it's getting worse. <laughs> yeah, no more, this is definitely the, the worst for me, I think. It's just, it's a very, Fish, I'm just going to tuck on back in there. And this will be our last fish. So I hope you uh, might be inspired to draw some fish of your own. Show us, show us how much better you are at the fish yeah. than us, please. Um, but if you do draw some fish for Sunday Fish Sketch, go ahead and tag them on Twitter, Sunday Fish Sketch, uh, hashtag Sunday Fish Sketch, and also tag them with uh, Teleaquarium so that we know that you followed along or that you saw us do this. Um, and we'll, we'll put ours up there. I don't think you can tell in any way, shape, or form this is a decorated war bonnet. No, mine just looks like a really long thing with fins. I'm, I'm actually just going to name this one Buoy Fish, I think, at this point. <laughs> The new new invention. Yeah, buoy fish. New species discovered. All right, I think I'm kind of getting to a point where it's not going to get any better. It's not going to get any better. <laughs> That's where I am. That's where I am. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, mark this one. Buoy fish. People are gonna be like, "What is that?" All right, my buoy fish, my decorated war bonnet. Down there in his buoy. Hopefully you can see him. Let's see what you've got. Okay, wait, I want to see. Oh, come on, yours looks okay. This is, it's just this weird is, shape. He literally just has his little head poking out. But that's out. what he does. Yours is good, yours is oh, good. Oh, great. Yours is like the appropriate shape. If you're curious about what they actually look like, 
Um, we have that Joel Satori photo, but otherwise Haley's is an uh, uh, appropriate representation of the body there. They're like kind of a long house. fish. They are. They're they are. not as like eely as the wolf eel, which again, not an eel. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But these guys are only like, what, were bonnets are maybe like seven? I think you know, maybe like, maybe up to a foot. Up to a foot. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Those are, that's about the size we have here. They might get really long. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, they're really fascinating fish. So, uh, hopefully you have had a good time just watching us suffer and draw <laughs> fish again for another Sunday. We actually have another program coming up today. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, we're going to be visiting our mascot here at the Sea Life Center, uh, Tuffy. So be sure you swing in for that at uh, 2 o'clock Alaska time, 3 o'clock Pacific time, 6 o'clock Eastern Coast time. <laughs> uh, and we will see you for another Tell Aquarium. But thank you so much for joining us, and uh, good sketching on your fish.